power. May God add his blessing to the reading of his most precious word. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, we come today as your people gathered here to thank you for your love and mercy and grace towards us. We come here to thank you for sending your blessed Son to be an example to us and for us. Father, we come to thank you for the land that we're allowed to live in. Father, we come to thank you for those heroes that stand in the gap to protect us from your enemies and our enemies. Oh, Lord, we thank you for it all. Father, we pray that you might be with those that are away from us, protecting us, watching over us. We thank you for them. Father, we confess that we are sinners. Our sins are as filthy rags. We need you. Like the one in Psalms was crying out, Lord, come help me. Come help me. And so it is. We uh, thank you for all of your goodness uh, to each and every one of us. Uh, Father, we pray for our friends and our neighbors, even our enemies, Father, that they might be healed. And by being healed, they might turn toward you and proclaim your holy name to the world about us. Now, Father, help us to look inside ourselves and to list and enumerate our sins, casting it all upon you, asking, Lord, that you might forgive each and every one of us. Uh, Father, in the moments ahead, I come to thank you for your word that encourages us, that guides us, Lord, and that assures us of your coming son that's coming to gather us home. It's in his name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> you all have been here uh, some few years as I've served here. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, in January, Brother Rusty, I'm going to be here 28 years. That's a, that's a good long tenure, isn't it? <clears throat> Those of you that have listened to me on the radio or have been here and heard some of my preaching know that sometimes I get out there and find something, and it's in the Bible, but I find something that maybe you've never heard preached before. I alluded to the prophet being there with the king and with the captain of the guard, and they were all cut off and about to starve to death. Now, I didn't tell you the first part of the story. There were two prostitutes that were about to starve to death, and they decided that they were going to kill their babies and eat them. And <clears throat> it got started, but the other one wouldn't give up their baby. And they went to the king and asked the king to do judgment, to make it right. And the king said, who am I, God? I can't make that judgment. So that's probably one of the few things that he got right. But that's when the captain of the guard laughed and the prophet told him, said, <clears throat> there's going to be such a glut of food tomorrow that it's going to be cheaper and going to save a lot. It is just going to be very cheap. And people will be running to get the food. And as the story goes along, uh, this is when the angel came in and whipped all of the enemies. And it was that lepers, now we know how much lepers were looked down upon, lepers went to surrender themselves to the enemy trying to get something to eat. I mean, things were bad. You think of what those two women were going to do? And they were going to surrender themselves. And they said, look, said if we go over there and they feed us, we're going to be better off. If we go over there and kill us, we're going to die anyway. 
I mean, they were fatalistic. They did not see any way out. But God. But God had been working all along. And as he did, he delivered the people. Now, the lepers went into the camp, found all 184,000 of them dead. I'm not saying that they counted every one of them. But uh, there was 184,000 that the angels had slain during the night. And if I'm not mistaken, there was only one angel that was fighting that night. Folks, it looked like it was so impossible that human mind could not conceive a way out. And yet God delivered them. God delivered them. Truly, the next day, when they heard the news that there was so much food and it was free and there wasn't enemies around, the captain of the guard who had laughed was squashed by the, by the crowd as they ran out to get the food. You know, uh, we don't hear much of it these days, but in the past, the recent past, the last 50 years, we've heard of there being concerts and people being trampled to death, trampled to death, trying to get to them, trying to get to the singers. Mm. We would never have thought of something like that happening, would we? I never would have. When I heard it the first time, I was just, do what? I was amazed. But God with this crowd, had provided for them a food, had provided them a Thanksgiving meal, and allowed them to do it. Folks, God has a plan and is working even now, even though we can't see it. We need to have the kind of faith that says, Lord, thank you for what's coming, because what's coming is a blessing. Multitudes are going to be fed. People are going to be healed. The dead are going to rise from the grave. God indeed is coming back. Coming back to save us. Now, I don't know. I can only speak for myself. But I'm a student of political science and history. And as I go back and I look at it, I don't see any way out for these people. Our people now have become so hard-hearted, so stiff-necked, so selectively deaf, that they don't hear the message of the Lord saying, Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will what? Give you rest. had a friend of mine that died year before last, and uh, he was several years older than me, but... He and I had similar interests, and we would go out about once a week or every other week and have dinner together, and we would talk about political things. Just couldn't see, couldn't see how things were going to work out. And yet things have worked out for the people of God. They will work out. You follow me? And... We need to be a faithful people, faithful to the Lord. And as we look out upon it, we need to proclaim God is coming again. We're fixing to get into uh, the Advent season, right? And that's when we celebrate Christ's coming the first time. Well, did he say he was coming? Yes. Did he come? Yes. So we can believe in that, but he's also said he's coming back for you and for me. Can we believe that? Yes. Not only can we believe that, but we need to have faith 
to believe in that, that we are up and looking toward the east because he's going to come from the east. So we go into this Thanksgiving season. Let us be thankful for everything God has done for us. And let us gather together, unite our hearts in prayer, and give praise to him that provides it all. May we praise God. Thank him for the bounty that we have of life. Let us pray. God in heaven, we cry unto you with joyful hearts. Even when our hearts are sad, we in faith pray and praise your name because you have provided a place for us. Now, Lord, help us to look upon the people that we know, our friends and neighbors, and Father, let us pray for them even though they may be using us in a wrong way. Father, we just ask that you go with us now. Father, that you might tenderize our hearts, that we might see people that need help. And Lord, let us put ourselves in their place and seek to do what we can do to bring about righteousness. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen.